Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we enter into the season of Advent. We prepare our hearts not only for the coming but for the return of Jesus, our Savior. And so, in this Eucharist, we ask our Lord Jesus for the grace of being ready and prepared to welcome His return into our lives. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God, God and to and you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and, and you, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the, the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us, how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we have now entered the season of Advent, symbolized by the Advent wreath in front of us, the four candles symbolizing the four Sundays that we are preparing ourselves for the celebration of Christmas. The word Advent is translated into Tagalog as Pagdating. Kaya ang season of Advent sa salita natin ay tinatawag na Panahon ng Pagdating ng Panginoon. But my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to point out another translation that we can give. Advent is not just the coming, but Advent is Jesus returning. Kaya ang panahon ng Adviento ay hindi lamang pagdating, kundi pagbabalik. Advent is not just the coming of Jesus, but it is the return of Jesus. Jesus coming back. And the coming of Jesus, the return of Jesus, teaches us that our God is a God who returns. Our God never abandons us. Our God never leaves us alone. When Jesus returns, He teaches us that our God is a God who returns. Our God is a God who comes back to us. I am sure, my dear brothers and sisters, we have so many experiences of being abandoned, of being deserted, of being left alone. 
And this is a hurtful experience, a painful experience. That is why the season of Advent importantly teaches us that the experience of God is an experience of not being abandoned, but the experience of God always returning, always coming back. Di pa po mga kapatid, siguro po mayroon na sa ating mga nakaranas na iwanan. Masakit ang iwanan. Huwag kayong titingin sa katabi ninyo, baka tinitingnan nyo yung katabi nyo na iniwan. No? Masakit ang maiwan. Masakit ang iwanan. Masakit ang pabayaan. Pero ang karanasan natin ng Diyos, hindi niya tayo iniiwan bagkus ang Diyos ay laging bumabalik. Bumabalik lagi ang Diyos. In our first reading today, from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, we see here the experience of the people of Israel that every time God returns to them, that is the promise of God always. And this was the reminder in our first reading by the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet tells us the days are coming when God will fulfill His promise. He will return and bring back justice, bring back goodness, restore again the people of Israel. The first reading today tells us that yes, the experience of being abandoned is painful, but our experience of our God is not the God who abandons, but the God who comes back, the God who returns. Kaya nga po, sigurado ako mayroon ditong mga nagsisimba ng mga overseas Filipino workers. Baka may mga seafarers na nagsisimba ngayon dito kasama natin o nagsisimba online sa mga oras na ito. Hindi ko ba yan ang inaabang-abangan ng mga OFWs at ng mga pamilya na kanilang naiwan sa Pilipinas? Masakit kasi yung paghihiwalay. Kaya inaabangan ng lahat ang pagbabalik. At ang pangako ng pagbabalik ay pinananabikan lagi. Yan ang masayang parte ng aspeto ng buhay, ang pagbabalik. Naalala ko po yung kwento ng aking nanay. Yung aking nanay po ay nagtrabaho rin sa ibang bansa bilang OFW. At sabi niya, hinding-hindi ko makakalimutan yung karanasan na babalik na ako sa Pilipinas para makasama ko ng muli ang aking pamilya. Sabi niya, iba ang pakiramdam kapag hindi mo kasama ang pamilya. Kaya sabi niya, kapag babalik ka na, naroon ang kagalakan, naroon ang excitement. Sabi niya sa amin, sa sobrang excited ko, naiwan ko lakat ng pasalubong ko na daladala ko doon sa aking kwarto. No? Kaya sabi ko sa kanya, ang number one lesson, wag iwanan ang pasalubong. <laughs> Kaya dapat, nariyan palagi. No? Paghahanda sa sobrang excited niya, sa sobrang saya niya sa pagbabalik, nakalimutan niya yung kanyang pasalubong sa amin. But this shows us, my dear brothers and sisters, the joy of return. When you are assured that someone is returning, there is joy. Masaya kapag alam mong babalikan ka. Masaya kapag alam mong babalik ang tao na yan. 
This is also the experience of Jesus and his disciples in our gospel reading today. In our gospel today, Jesus promises his disciples that yes, you will experience trials, you will experience distress, but Jesus promises them, I will not leave you alone in distress. I will return. I will come back so that I can strengthen you, so that I can restore you again. I can restore justice. I can restore goodness when I return. Mga minamahal na kapatid, yan po ang ating Panginoong Diyos. Ang ating Panginoong Diyos ay marunong bumalik. Babalik ang Diyos. Aayusin ang ating buhay. Kung may karanasan man tayo na may mga ibang tao na iniwan tayo, may mga tao na iniwan ka, sinira ang buhay mo, umutang pa sa'yo at hindi ka pa rin binabalikan hanggang ngayon. Kung may mga tao na nakaranas ka, na sinaktan ka, at hindi man lamang bumalik para humingi ng tawad at para ayusin ang sirang ginawa niya, ang Diyos kabaliktaran. Ang Diyos laging bumabalik para ayusin anuman ang nasira sa buhay natin. Ang Diyos natin ay marunong bumalik. If you have experienced an experience of pain from another person, a person who hurt you but did not even come back to you to ask for forgiveness, to repair what, what pain He has caused you, Jesus promises us that He will come back. He is a God of return, a God of coming back. Kaya mga kapatid, kung ang ating Diyos ay ang Diyos ng pagbabalik, ang Diyos na marunong bumalik para ayusin anuman ang mga sira na mayroon sa ating buhay, sana tayo rin, matuto rin tayong bumalik. Kung mayroon po kayong mga dapat balikan, kung mayroon man po kayong mga iniwan na dapat nyo nang balikan at dapat nyo nang ayusin, balikan na natin. Ayusin na natin. Kung sakali man iniwan mo ang asawa mo, iniwan mo ang pamilya mo, iniwan mo na ang simbahan, iniwan mo na ang Diyos, hindi ka na nagdarasal, iniwan mo na ang pananampalataya. Kung iniwan mo man ang mga anak mo, iniwan mo man ang magulang mo, kung dumating sa punto ng buhay na iniwan mo ang prinsipyo mo, bumoto ako ng mali dati, iniwan ko ang prinsipyo ko, bumalik ka na. Balikan mo na ang mga iniwan mo. Ayusin mo na ang mga nasira mo. Ang Panginoong Diyos natin, ay nagtuturo sa ating bumabalik siya. Inaayos niya lahat. Babalikan niya ang mga naiwan. Sana tayo rin matuto tayong balikan ano ang mga dapat nating balikan. Ayusin natin ano man ang mga dapat nating ayusin. Yan ang adyento.
hindi lamang pagdating, kundi pagbabalik. Yan ang mensahe ng ating ikalawang pagbasa mula sa sulat ni San Pablo sa mga taga Thessalonica. He said, Increase and abound in love. Conduct yourselves to be pleasing to God before His return. Whatever pain we may have caused, whomever persons we may have left, to whomever people or persons we may have caused pain, let us now return to them. If you have left your family, if you have left your children, if you have left your spouse, your husband, or your wife, if you have left your faith, if you have left the church, this is the proper time to return. Make amends. Ask for forgiveness. Repair the pain that we have caused. Our God is a God of return. Our God is a God who comes back. Balikan na po natin ano man ang mga dapat nating balikan. Ayusin na natin ano man ang dapat nating ayusin. Yan ang adyento. Pagdating at pagbabalik. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. At the beginning of the new church year, let us intercede for others. Our charity shows that we are watching and waiting for the glorious coming of our Savior. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That this season of vigil may find all members of the church drawn to prayer and penance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That all world leaders may realize that the destiny of nations is in God's control. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That God's grace may touch hearts hardened by the cares of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may look to the future, not in fear, but in hope and confidence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the Son of Man may grant His salvation to those who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions, for all the intentions offered in this Mass, and let us also pray for people who ask for our prayers.
graciously hear the prayers of your family, most merciful Father, amidst all the turmoil and change in our lives, we wait for the return of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the price of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when He comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, 
so that converted at last to you, we may love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few important announcements. As uh, we have begun the Advent season, we also begin tomorrow our novena, nine-day preparation for the great solemnity feast of the Immaculate Conception, the patroness of the Manila Cathedral and the patroness of the whole country of the Philippines. And uh, we will be beginning our Novena Masses tomorrow, and for nine days we will be having our guest priests who will be celebrating our Novena Masses daily. And uh, on the feast day of the Immaculate Conception on December 8th, our schedule of Masses will be at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. The 6 p.m. Mass will be the Fiesta Mass to be presided by our dear Archbishop, Jose Cardinal Advincula. And also on that evening at 6 p.m. of December 8, he will be bestowed the pallium the symbol of being the Archbishop of Manila and the Ecclesiastical Province of Manila. This pallium was blessed in the Vatican by Pope Francis and is given to Archbishops in different places. And uh, if you want to uh, check the detailed schedule of our festivities, please uh, log on to our social media pages so that you may be updated of the different activities for our Fiesta of the Immaculate Conception this year. Also, we have a visitor here, the image of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. Maybe you have seen the image as you are coming in the cathedral. We celebrated yesterday the Feast of uh, our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, and we celebrated her feast day mass here. And this image comes from her shrine here in San Marcelino, in, uh, inside the Adamson uh, University complex, uh, inside St. Vincent de Paul Parish. And we are grateful to the Vincentian Fathers for uh, having with us here the image of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. After the Mass, you may go to, to, to the image and light a candle and offer a prayer so that we could also prepare our hearts this season of Advent as we prepare for the return and coming of our Savior. Let us now all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing now and forever. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, May he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity now and forever. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.